Good morning, students. Today we'll be looking at introduction to Sir. Our writing material, pencil barrel. I think we are ready with them. So let's kick off. Introduction to Sir. Definition of Sir. A Sir, like we know, is the basic unit and functional structure units of living organism. A Sir is capable of carrying out all metabolic processes, which includes feeding, respiration, and growth. Cell can also be defined as the smallest, smallest unit of living organism. For cell will exist in various forms. Among the forms in which cell exists, we have single and free living units, a colony, a filament. Cell as a single cell and free living organism. A single cell can be free living, that is independent, and capable of independent existence. It can exist on its own. Example of a free living organism, we have our amoeba, paramecium, euglena, and clamadominus. Those are examples of free living organisms. Now there we have the diagram of a free living organism, amoeba. Amoeba is shapeless. It has no definite shape. We can see the diagram, the outer part called the membrane, the nucleus, that is the center of the life, the food vacuole, where food are stored, the contractile vacuole that assists in excretion and osmoregulation the ectoplasm and the cytoplasm. You have to learn how to draw and label this diagram very, very well. The pseudopodia, or what we call the phosphate, that is using engulfing the food as well as movement. The structure of amoeba. Amoeba cell is microscopic and has no definite shape, like I said the other one. Its shape varies, it's varied by what? By the pseudopodia formation called phosphate. Meaning, our other name for the pseudopodia is the phosphate. Pseudopodia is used to engulf its prey, as well as for movement. We have said that before. It has a food vacuum for storing food. Its body is made up of protoplasm, consisting of cytoplasm and the nucleus. Those are the key parts of the structure of any microscopic organism. It has contractile vacuole for excretion and regulation, and it reproduces by binary fission that is dividing into two. Another microscopic unicellular organism is the paramecium. Paramecium is slippery shape. It has two contractile vacuole, the anterior and the exterior. It has two nucleus, the small one, micro, and the big one, macro. It has cilia for movement, also food vacuole, and lysosome, which we don't have in the amoeba. It has oral groove, we don't have in amoeba. Structure of paramecium. Paramecium is microscopic in size, flat, and slippery shape. That is, it looks like the shape of your sleeper. Its body is covered with cilia for movement and the pellicle, pellicle. The pellicle gives a definite shape and cilia is meant for movement. It has two contract, the two nucleus, the micronucleus and the mega nucleus. There is also presence of two contractile vacuum, one in front anterior and the other one posterior. Euglena 
is another unicellular organism, Ugnina varidis. It is also an independent unicellular organism found in water and running pools. It is a dual organism. What do we mean by a dual organism? That is, it can be a plant, it can also be an animal. It is autotrophic, it is heterotrophic. It has flagellum for movement and sensitivity. Flagellum for movement and sensitivity. The contractile vacuole is meant for what? Osmoregulation and excretion. It also reproduces by binary fission. There we have the structure of euglena on the, on the slide. You can see the flagellum that is used for sensitivity and movement. We can see the nucleus, the controlling unit, the contractor vacuole for osmoregulation, the pellicle for rigidity, the, cytop the chloroplast which makes it a plant. The presence of chloroplast in euglena makes it a plant, and that is why we say it is a dual organism. It can act as an animal, it can act as a plant. Cell as a colony. There are some cells that are colonial in nature. Individual organisms of the same species that live closely together for mutual benefit. That is a colonial organism. Organism, individual, of the same species that live together for mutual benefit, that is, they benefit from one another. A colony, a colony of single cell organism is known as colonial organism. We have said that. Example, we have the sponges. Cell as a filament. Some cell exist as a filament. Example, we have the spirogyra or what we call the green filamentous algae. Udogunion and Ultri. The diagram of the Spirogyra is shown there. You can see the cell wall that makes it a plant, the chloroplast, a plant feature, the prenoid, an animal feature, the mucilage, an animal feature, and the controlling unit, which is the nucleus. So you'll be asked, you may be asked, to give the plant feature of Spirogyra. Just look at the structure. The structure of Spirogyra is connected end to end. The outer portion consists of the cell wall made up of two layers. The two layer, the outer one called the pectin, and the inner one called the cellulose. In the cytoplasm, we have the chloroplast present on each filament. That is, on each filament of the spirogyra structure, we have chloroplast present. Each of these chloroplasts contain what we call prenoid. Each of the chloroplasts contain prenoid. Spirogyra will reproduce by both sexual and asexual method. Level of cell organization in multicellular organisms. Multicellular organisms have five levels of organization, from the simplest to the complex. These are the cellular level, the tissue level, the organ level, the system level, and the organism level. This level we call level of organization. We call this level of organization from the smallest to the most complex. Let's look at this organism that exists at the cell level. We define cell as a basic structural and functional unit of living things. They may serve specific function within the organisms. Example of cells are the white blood cell, the red blood cell, the nerve cell, and the reproductive cell, bone cell. Cell that exists in the tissue level. Tissue is a collection of cell. I say what? Tissue is a collection of cell that work together to perform a specific function. 
a collection of cells that work together to perform a specific function is a tissue. In human, tissue includes the connective tissue, the epithelial tissue, the muscle tissue, and the nerve tissue. In plants, tissues are epidermal in the leaf, in the, leaf the palisade, the mesophyll, and the spongy tissue. Those are tissues in plants. Now the diagram here shows the tissue in the plant. There we can see the internal structure of the monocot stem, the internal structure of a monocot root. This is for the stem, this is the root. So they are both tissues in plants. Under it we see the dermal tissue here in the leaf. This is for the leaf. You can see the palisade tissue. For the root, we can also see the dermal tissue. And the conducting tissues in the root are the xylem and the fluid. Organism that exists at the organ level. Organ is defined as a collection of tissue that work together to perform a specific function, a specified function. Collection of tissue that work together to perform a specified function. Organs in man will include the heart, heart is an organ, the brain is an organ, the skin is an organ, the reproductive organ, and so on. Organs in plants will have the bulb, our onion, and the rhizome, the example of organs in plants. System. System are a group of organs, or what we call a collection of organs, that come together to perform a specific function. Collection of organs that come together to perform a specific function. Example of organ in man will have the system, sorry, we have the circulatory system, the digestive system, the hormonal system, the nervous system, the reproductive system, and so on. In plants, system could be the vascular system, the root system, and the shoot system. Now, having seen the systems and organs, our assignments for this class will be one, to list the four forms in which cell will exist, give one example each of forms in which cell will exist. Then for our further reading, let us go to our College Biology by Udodo Ume, Essential Biology by MC Michael. And you read further on types of cell, eukaryotic cell, prokaryotic cell, cell theories, and contributors to cell theory. Cell theory and contributors to cell theory. Do we have question? Any question for this? Yes, can I hear you? Cell theory. Yeah, let me briefly explain what we mean by cell theory. Cell theory is the definition of cell by scientists that look at cell. They now see cell in different form. Exactly. They see cell in different form. So this definition of cells by these different scientists was now put together to make what we call cell theory. Among the cell theory is the one that was given by the father of cell, Mr. Robert Hooks, that gave us the cell as well, the structural and functional unit of cell. Another scientist cell, an existing cell is obtained from the pre-existing cell. So when we put these two by Robert Hooks and Schleiden together with other contributors of cell, so that makes what we call the cell 
theory. Yes, yeah, some of them are from German and some are from English. Exactly. Eh? So we shall be looking at other aspects of cell in our next class. Thank you.